welcome to the latest Way Out West video. I'm um, sorry about the look. I know I'm rocking the COVID lockdown beard, but uh, okay, that's the way it is. Uh, this video is not uh, one of the uh, previous set where we were using the old um, Zoom interviews from last year. Uh, this video is going to feature Ben Wicks. It's a special call out. Uh, we've got one of our great musician mates who's um, struggling with some health issues, so we thought that we would get uh, Ben involved to let us know what's going on. Um, I'm going to put a link to the Bandcamp uh, download site down below, uh, and you'll see why as we get into the interview with Ben. Also, we're working on a gig calendar for December. Uh, it's going to be very exciting. We've got three artists coming up, so... Uh, Stay tuned and we'll get some more information out to you. And please don't forget to subscribe. I'm really digging getting some comments on the, the videos. So, um, yeah, leave some comments, subscribe, and then um, we can keep doing these for you. Well, it's, it's a bit of a windy road, and I, I imagine most bass players have a similar story i don't think many bass players wake up one day and go yeah right that's what i'm gonna do um i i asked for my first guitar at the age of three and at four i was still kind of talking about it and my parents kind of gave gave in and got me my first guitar a little sort of nylon stringed acoustic and at about nine, eight and a half, nine or something, a cousin of mine, um, an older cousin of mine, was listening to um, Curtis Mayfield, the soundtrack to Superfly. And um, the bass line in, like, Freddie's Dead, I was just like, what's that bit? That, you know? And he was like, oh, that's, that's the electric bass. And it just, I don't know why, I don't know why then, you know, like I grew up around a lot of music. There was always, you know, music and dance and singing and stuff um, in our household when we were little. So, you know, but just that moment at that time really caught me and that was it. I, I demanded an electric bass not long after that and, and it's all been downhill since then. Yeah, look, I've like, we all, I think every electric bass player at some point goes through a Jaco phase, you know, um, while we're stretching out and, and experimenting with harmony and experimenting with some of the other parts of electric bass playing that aren't necessarily the first, the first part or the, the, you know, the anchor of what the electric bass does in 99% of music. Um, Jaco and, and Victor Wooten's another one that kind of live in this other world of, you know, extension and, and harmony, which is incredible. And, you know, the electric bass is a relatively new instrument and, and we're still, as a collective, electric bass players are still kind of working on and deciding, you know, um, existentially what the electric bass really is. But personally, um, it, that's not kind of my trip. It's not what I really um, excites me. It's not what excites me about electric bass. I'm, I really love sitting in a pocket. I really love, you know, um, you know, you kind of sit on one side of the fence. You know, you've got your Jaco and your James Jameson and your Victor Wooten on this side of the fence, and you've got you know Donald Dick Dunn from Stax. And you've got, you know, those, you know, kind of groove based players on the other side of the fence. And, and for a long time, I thought that because the groove stuff was in inverted commas simple or easier, it wasn't um, as important or it wasn't as advanced. So I kind of shied away from that. But when I boil it down and I think about what's important to me, um, that groove stuff is, is where it's at. It's why I play the instrument. Um, it's the foundation of so much. And a perfectly written bass line negates the, 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 the need for any other instrument except for the melody. 
mean, and I I would tick the boxes and say for me personally, on every level, um, it has been successful. Um, I am very, very happy with where it's at, where it's come from and, and where it's going. Um, the reality is that I was running around town playing bass for a, just about every blues band that would have me anyway. Um, and I found myself more and more kind of getting, kind of painting myself into a corner where I was doing a lot of the work behind the scenes that a lot of other guys didn't want to do. The, the you know, maintaining the Facebook and pulling the assets together, the videos and the, that poster art and all the stuff that is what makes any commercial you know, creative thing work outside of little front bars. Um, and, it, you know, a couple of years into kind of running around and doing all this work for everyone else and kind of realising that at the end of the day, the second someone else turns up that can do the gig better than me, essentially I've done all of this work and, and not really benefited um, personally from it. So on, on some level, the whole roulette thing was a little bit of a response to that. And I guess that's a little bit sort of selfish. Um, but then at the same time, I really wanted to, to raise a flag and, and show artists and, and guys in the blues community that all these things that I'm doing can be done very simply. You know, I'm very, I'm an open book. Anyone asks me about any of it, whether it's the merch or the recordings or the tours or, you know, um, it, it's important to me that, you know, it's a part of a community. It's, um, yes, yeah, Jesse, Jesse's had a bit of a rough, rough trot. And um, he was one of the guys that really stepped up and helped me a couple of years back when, when I was ill. Um, so I, I felt um, a real... Um, a real need to get involved. Um, and this way, this was a way that I thought not only could help right now, but it's something that can sit there and bubble away and continue to help him um, into the future over the next 12, 18 months. Um, so we, yeah, we, we, I've, I've got a whole bunch of recordings. I kind of record a lot of stuff, a lot more stuff than um, will ever be heard by anybody. And I just kind of went back through the archives and dusted off some tracks and um, it's come up really well. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, and to save the expense of putting it on a CD, because that's one of the biggest, of all of the kind of costs, that's one of the biggest ones um, for our, the roulette little live recordings anyway. Um, so we decided not to put them on CDs so that more of the money can go to Jess. And uh, it's on Bandcamp. It's on the, the Blues Roulette uh, Bandcamp. So if you search, you get into Bandcamp, you search Blues Roulette, or you search Ben Wicks, or you search Jesse, I think you find it. Mm -hmm.